they prowl the Pacific. Unleashing their fury on coastal communities, from Tokyo to the southern Philippines. For as long as people have inhabited these coastlines, typhoons have been a part of life. But once in a generation comes a storm that eclipses all others. Its impact so punishing, it'll never be forgotten. The Western Pacific. Over 15 million square kilometers of warm ocean water. The world's most prolific tropical cyclone breeding ground. And the 2013 season, it's active. July, Typhoon Solik hits Taiwan. Utor smashes the Philippines and China in August. September, Usagi comes close to hitting Taiwan as a Cap 5. October, three typhoons in seven days. But it's not until November that the season really bears its fangs when a tropical storm forms southeast of Guam. Its name, Haiyan. It's clear this storm is gonna threaten the Philippines, but the events that follow, no one can foresee. Uh, we're in Manila. Mark Thomas, my chase partner of three years. And we're contemplating where we're gonna go next. But uh, tomorrow morning, we're gonna have to choose where we're gonna go and how we get there. Night four, 6th of November, 2013. Haiyan strengthens into a super typhoon. How are you feeling, Mark? What are your thoughts? What's going through your head? Well, we're waiting for Josh, and then we start traveling. And to be honest, a little bit scared, but safety first is definitely the order of the day for this one. But I don't think either of us have ever seen or been close to anything quite this big. Well, here he is, the man himself, Josh. How are you? How are you awesome. feeling? Awesome to be with you guys, reunited with the team. How was your flight? Excellent, excellent, very smooth. Everything was like clockwork, which was good because my connections were all very tight. So if any of them were missed, this whole trip would have been ruined. Okay, and what are your thoughts on uh, the storm? Actually nervous about it. This is a uh, this is like top of the intensity scale. Uh, this is like serious, serious stuff. Uh, you know, we could be in the core of a Category 5 typhoon, which uh, no chasers have done before, so I'm taking this very seriously. It's the latest satellite image of Super Typhoon High End. An absolute classic Category 5 storm. Uh, you can see the well-defined clear eye there, surrounded by uh, a, a monstrous stadium effect high wall. Uh, wherever this comes ashore, it's going to be a devastating event. The forecast track zeroes in on the islands of Samar and Leyte, a one-hour flight southeast of Manila. Some initial, just initial browsing is that it's either going to be Samar Island or Leyte Island, and we're, we're heading to Tacloban, which is where those two islands meet, so which, first thing we got to figure out is are we heading south or north from Tacloban. So we're just waiting for our flight. This is one of the nervous uh, parts of these trips, is just uh, hoping that the flight isn't delayed or cancelled. Uh, we're due to get into Tacloban around one o'clock, and then hopefully that'll give us two or three hours of daylight to recce areas of the coast which are likely to get hit by the typhoon. November 7th, 2013, 2 p.m. 18 hours until landfall. Our priority on arrival, food and water. Then finding suitable shelter. Meanwhile, 200 kilometers offshore, Haiyan continues to intensify. And we quickly realize our beachfront hotel will be an unsurvivable location. Yeah, no, I have to say, you know, I was, I was so determined to get in the eye of this thing, and I was like, I'm just going to go for broke, I don't care how strong it is, I'm going to get in the eye, and now I'm looking at this latest IR, and it just, I don't know, it really kind of freaks me out. I, I've, I've never seen that a makes... tropical cyclone that looks like this, and uh, I don't know, that just, I don't know if the buildings around here are sub substantive The mall is the only one that's... I mean, that, that is insane. Those cold... The, first of all, the cloud tops are extremely cold, although there's dark gray. Secondly, they're almost like perfectly symmetrically distributed around that center. I mean, that, I've never seen this before. And we're in the path of the thing. And we're in the path of this. We're in the path of that core. And that eye is big enough that I think that this whole area is basically going to be in the core. I think everywhere from Tacloban way down to Mallorca, I think is basically going to be getting eyewall core conditions. 
we shouldn't be here. We certainly can't be staying at this hotel anymore. We obviously we've got to tonight. If that comes on like that, this whole town is going to get flattened. I mean, um, um, I don't know where we're going to go, but we're going to we're going to be in a, a serious situation. And now, I'm honestly thinking we're not chasing the storm; it's chasing us. Well, I do. I agree that I think basically the whole the eye is, is is bigger than I thought, and what that means is that basically the core of this is bigger than I thought. Yeah. This whole area that we've reconned today, we've gone up and down the coast trying to pinpoint where it's going to come short. I think that's almost not even relevant. I think no, that no, basically no. the whole we, area is we, going to get raked by peak conditions. We are going to be in the storm, and we now have to move more to Protect survival ourselves. mode yeah. than to uh, chasing it. We're going to get it. And we've, none of us have ever seen anything like this before. And there's going to be many, many, many people in serious situations. So well, I think let's not let's not get you know let's not overreact to it. No, it's I'm not. I'm image. not. And I'm I know not that you're overreacting. But I'm, I'm not. I'm just obviously looking. We're here uh, to the document words, this. But all of us looked at that picture and went. No, I, so, I had a reaction to it, yeah. but I mean, we're here so, to document this. this yeah, oh no, totally. Well, I, we must, we are here, here to do it, and we have got to record everything we can. Uh, absolutely, 100%. But we also have to look at, we're in a very, very dangerous situation. We relocate to a four-story concrete building in downtown, the Hotel Alejandro. So we're in our third hotel today. Um, we've really been jumping around town. Um, that's the way it goes when you're dealing with a monster super typhoon. You want to be somewhere where you feel comfortable uh, that you're going to be safe and get through the storm unscathed. We're just um, carb loading right now. Lots of French fries, uh, meat, because this is probably the last decent meal we're going to have for what could be you know, many days. Just really waiting for what is going to be a hellish experience tomorrow. Here's the uh, latest satellite loop of uh, Super Typhoon High End, an absolutely off the scale uh, storm. Uh, they don't get any stronger than this. We're currently located just about here. As you can see, the storm is barreling right towards us. The guys behind me, they're just checking the latest satellite loops. Um, the storm is 170 knots from JTWC now. We're talking about one of the strongest tropical cyclones ever recorded on Earth. Um, this is serious, this is uncharted territory. Um, and we basically have no idea what we're gonna expect. So um, it's gearing up and uh, getting ready to kind of tackle the storm as, as safely as possible. Uh, my feelings right now, kind of pretty freaked out to be honest. Um, just gotta keep it as cool ahead as possible. And I uh, just hope that this four story solid concrete building does its job and keeps us safe. It really is the calm before the storm here in Tacloban. Uh, you wouldn't really know that there is a one of the world's strongest tropical cyclones ever hurtling towards the city. Uh, yeah, there's a few uh, light gusts um, and a, a bit of uh, light rain as well. But other than that, um, you know, it's not much going on yet. And we are only about three to four hours away from the peak intensity of the storm. So things are going to dramatically escalate here. And this is going to be uh, an exceedingly dangerous place to be. Absolutely crucial development for us. It's starting to get light, which is absolutely imperative for us to be able to film what is going to be in just a jaw-dropping typhoon. I'm just very, very fortunate that we're going to be able to catch this in daylight. And we are about an hour and a half away from the peak mad ferocity of this typhoon. Well, the winter is starting to pick up now and it feels like there is a typhoon. Ooh. Wow, well, uh, talk about interrupting a, a piece of the camera or a, a, a tour, yeah. But as you can see, the winds are increasing. <laughs> Well, the winds are really starting to escalate here in Tacloban. Strong gusts, the power's been knocked out, uh, tree branches have been flying through the air, uh, and we're still about an hour away from the worst of this typhoon. It's really, really gonna hammer this city hard.
no sudden weakening, last minute wobbles, deviations in track. Nothing can save Taclobert now. November 8th, 2013, 6.50am. The eye wall hits. The Hotel Alejandro takes a beating, but the thick concrete walls protect us from the violence unfolding outside. I believe the worst is over, but that proves to be a grave miscalculation. Seawater starts pouring into the streets of Tagloban, and then the hotel. So we have storm surge starting to flood the uh, ground floor of the hotel. Residents are evacuating up to the uh, second floor. Mark and Josh evacuate the retired mayor of Tacloban to the second floor. Guests trapped in a flooded room try to smash their way out. Josh carries a child from across the street to the safety of the hotel. transition from having a handle on the situation to everything spiraling hopelessly out of control happens in an instant. Mark, be careful your feet. Whilst trying to help the trapped guests, Mark collides with sheet metal debris hidden beneath the filthy storm surge water. He sustains deep lacerations right down to his shin bone. Okay, come on, come on. Come on. 
leg up high. Up high. Hopefully it's only a straight. No, 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 no. It went right to the dome. The water level continues to rise, the guests are still trapped. Then someone comes up with a genius idea. Mattresses. Maybe here. The first elderly guest is hoisted to safety. Okay, well done, guys. One more. Any more in there, Josh? Two more. 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 Two feel a strange sensation in my legs. Whether it's my imagination running wild or a real electrical current, I'll never know. One more. We're good, everyone. Okay, I can feel electricity in the water, guys. My legs are tingling. It's electricity, I can feel it. We need to get the fuck out of this water. That's electricity. Okay, we're here. We, you guys are good. Don't worry. Okay, the stairs, you can yeah, get up those stairs. Okay, ma'am. Well, no. Okay. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. Don't worry. We'll get you there. Get up. Get There's electricity in this water. I can feel it. Okay. I got your hand. I got your I got your Don't worry. Don't worry, okay, we got you. You're okay, you're safe. You're safe, don't worry. You're fine now, you're safe. Anyone else? Everyone at Hotel Alejandro survives the storm. But beyond our sanctuary, a hellscape. the waterfront neighborhood. A whole community here, wiped out. Hello. See 
scene of absolute devastation here in the waterfront in Taklavan. The wind's really still flying. But the power of the storm surge, it's almost like a tsunami hit this area. Uh, unfortunately, they are pulling bodies out of the rubble behind me. Uh, seen at least two so far in the last uh, half an hour. And people are, are just sifting through the debris, trying to retrieve whatever remains uh, and belongings they can, uh, they can find. It's, uh, it's truly, truly devastated this community. I am Mr. Jarek Silva, uh, San Enlu here in the hills I uh, As of uh, 11 o'clock, uh, we loaded already three dead, dead uh, four dead bodies. Two ladies and, uh, and uh, four, two female and two male. And one baby also, so it, it counts of five. I don't know there inside at, at this height. I think there are more, much more dead bodies there. But as of now, the city government, the CDRRMO, uh, City Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, is clearing the road in order for the rescue team or the responders or the or the medical teams to pass truly. So as of now, they are clearing the road and for the rescuers to come. I return to the hotel and try to process everything I've just witnessed. Uh, that was an absolutely ferocious uh, experience. It got very edgy. The storm surge came in and basically totally inundated the ground floor. People freaking out, trapped in their ground floor rooms uh, who had to be rescued. Uh, people smashing windows to try and get out of their hotel rooms. Uh, helping elderly kids, uh, people who were basically fleeing to the hotel to get away from the surge. Just absolutely crazy scenes. Uh, unfortunately, one of our team, Mark, trying to rescue someone, injured himself, cut his leg very badly on a bit, bit of glass, but hopefully he'll be okay. Um, and now it's aftermath mode. Uh, we got supplies to keep us going for a long time. So uh, that was one hell of a uh, punch. Mark, how are you doing, man? All right. Mark unfortunately sustained an injury whilst trying to come to the rescue of some young ladies who were trapped. Uh, as the storm surge is coming up, but he's had some uh, first aid done on him and he's just taking a well earned rest. So, the front desk, what is shipping into a room? We sent somebody, nobody came. So, we just waited, I thought we started packing our things to prepare ourselves to evacuate. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, so the water was already, I think, one and a half feet high, shipping yeah. from the door, and, and the door quickly, was. Yeah. Pushing, yeah. Pushing it. Yeah, so it's meaning so water outside was high already. Yeah, yeah, I tried to open the door. It won't open. What open. I kick it, it won't open. Shit. And then I look around, I saw glass, sliding glass. I tried to open it. Yeah. What yeah. open also the lock. Blocked, yeah. I got the lamp, the base, and I broke it. Wow. And then my wife was panicking, help, help. And we get out first because there are glass still yeah. hanging and we have to get it. My daughter was crying. Yeah, yeah. Papa, the water is high already. I know, I know. So I, I put some bag on, three bags a bit, and I carry my daughter. Yeah. And then, you, uh, I, I don't yeah. know if it was you who came back. No, no the other one. The other two guys came back. I came in, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I put it on the mattress yeah, yeah. and I, I got some things and went out slowly yeah. through the side. <laughs> oh my God, we were really, really, we <laughs> would have accepted our fate if we could not have gotten out. Oh we will drown inside the room. But no thank yous, that's fine. Yeah, uh, without your help. No, 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 it's okay. I have family too. And I'm sorry for that also. No, 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 it's good, really. You're a good, good father. Hyanna's gone. It's brought a whole city to its knees. The hospital overflows with the injured. With the setting sun comes despair, dread, helplessness. An apocalyptic hellscape as Tacloban burns. November 9th, 8 a.m. We formulate an escape plan. Our plan is now to try and find any kind of vehicle to get 
north to Samar Island, and there's a city, uh, Josh, what's it called? Catabalogan City. And it's about 70 kilometers as the crow flies north of us, um, and it has an airport. So we're gonna try and hit the road, get out of Takloban, because Mark needs medical attention. We find a vehicle, but with the roads piled high with debris, it's impossible to make any progress. So we just got a new bit of information from Mark. He's back at a hotel with uh, a guy called Benny, a nice German guy. Um, apparently there's information that the military are trying to uh, get flights out and there's a possibility if we do go to the, the police station in the hotel, that there might be a vehicle which can get us to the airport uh, so then we can get back to Manila. Uh, people are starting to get pretty desperate, it would seem. Um, this, yeah, you can see this town is suffering very badly. So uh, we're just getting some information. Apparently the military are flying people to Cebu. Um, so we're going to try and work out how we can maybe get on one of those flights. Uh, looks like this is a police staging area. So we're just near where the helicopters are landing, not exactly sure what they're doing um, in terms of ferrying in aid or getting people out, but this is an area of obviously a hub of military activity which suggests it should be relatively secure. Uh, there's communications up here which is which is uh, a promising uh, development, so uh, it's kind of a good, good area to be in. And then, from out of nowhere, a stroke of luck. So we're not exactly sure what's going on. Basically, we put our names down on a list, a mysterious list, which hopefully means uh, we can get on an airplane. We're following a general, a very senior guy in the Philippines Air Force, um, to a landing pad where lots of helicopters are. Uh, what? Like, give him the key. Give him the key. Take all the water. Rechts. Okay. Let's put the water in our room, 2nd seconds feel like hours as we wait for confirmation of how many people could ride on the helicopter. Four. Within seconds we're airborne, in a state of disbelief how lucky we are. It's a less than three minute ride across the bay to Tacloban Airport. And it's been completely destroyed, gutted by the immense storm surge that inundated the coast. But despite the damage, the Air Force are flying supplies in and people out.
the bodies of some of the victims are loaded first. A storm surge over 17 feet, over 6,300 dead, and many more missing. Whole villages wiped out. Lives changed forever. 